On this episode, we're tasting the three main expressions from Siete Leguas right here on the Tequila Hombre next. Welcome to this episode, Tequila Hombre. Today, I'm excited to do a review of Siete Leguas, and I'll be reviewing their three main expressions, their Blanco, their Reposado, and their Añejo. Now, Siete Leguas started just over 65 years ago. Um, they started with one main factory, which um, is still currently in production, and then they opened up a second factory later, and they're one of the only distilleries that I know of that utilizes two factories to make their single flavor profile for their tequila. And it allows them to be one of the most consistent tequilas out there where from bottle to bottle, you can pretty much expect the flavor to be the same. And the reason why is their two tequilas, the two factories that they have, make two different kind of flavored tequilas. They have two different characteristics to them. And then what they do is they take the tequila from each of them and they blend them together until they nail the flavor profile that they're looking for that's the same as every other bottle that they've produced. So they kind of take an interesting approach to making their tequila. So what process do they use? Well, they use excellent processes or processes that are used in making excellent tequila. They use a horno to cook their, uh, their agaves. They um, mill two different ways. The old factory has a Tejona, which is the only tequila factory left that still uses live burros. So um, they use a Tejona in the, in the old factory. And then um, in the new factory, they use roller mills. And the way the, the factories are set up are completely different, where the hornos in the new factory are actually built into the ground and the hornos in the old factory are your classic stone brick hornos um, that are built into the side of the wall. So it was kind of interesting when I had a chance to tour both distilleries. Um, they're really very close to each other and got to see uh, how they make their tequila. So a little bit about the name Siete Leguas. It was named after Pancho Villa's horse. And if I remember correctly, Pancho Villa and the original um, gentleman that started Siete Leguas um, knew each other or their grandparents knew each other or something like that. But there was a connection where that they actually knew Pancho Villa and uh, they actually have a signed uh, photograph in the distillery uh, where Pancho wrote a, uh, a note uh, to the owner of Siete Leguas uh, in, saying thanks and, and that he liked the tequila or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But if you do visit the distillery, you can see the photograph of Pancho Villa that he had signed. So there's a lot of history there. The brand is pretty widely distributed. You can find it on a lot of shelves in a lot of different liquor stores. Your neighborhood liquor store might carry it. Um, but it is uh, becoming more and more common to see Siete Leguas in stores at least uh, around here in Southern California. So let's get on to the tasting and we'll see what these taste like and, uh, and we'll get some more information about uh, what you can expect if you pick some up next. Starting things off, we are going to start with the Blanco. And of course, I'm going to be using the Jarrito um, nosing glass from Stazel uh, as my tasting glass, since I do think you get the best uh, flavors and uh, nose from your tequila using this particular glass. So we'll start with the, uh, the Blanco, because typically if you're tasting multiple expressions, uh, you want to start with the Blanco and work your way from the Blanco up to the Añejo. So we're gonna crack this thing open. These are miniature bottles that I picked up in Mexico when I was coming back from my trip to the tequila region in Guadalajara and Jalisco. And um, see what these are all about. So let's take a look at it first. All right, so starting off it is supremely clear which is great and then looking at it we'll swirl it around let it open up a little bit but also if you look at the glass good uh, legs on it 
pearls everywhere. This is uh, shows the viscosity on it. it's pretty good. So let's check the nose out and see what we get on the nose. Mm. Wonderful cooked agave smell. I'm getting some uh, citrus from it. It's very peppery. It has a nice peppery nose to it too. The cooked agave is the dominant, but you get these hints of pepper and uh, and citrus on it as well. It's got a really nice, really nice nose to it. Mmm. It really, really smells good. And it, you can get a little bit of the alcohol from it as well in the nose. But it smells really grassy herb, you know, um, vegetal from the cooked agave. Get the get the cooked agave sweetness as well, and then hints of pepper and uh, and citrus. It's what I'm picking up here. Mm, very good. It smells very good. Let's give it a taste. It has a very nice. Um, creamy mouthfeel. It is very aggressive on the heat. So you get a lot of heat from it. Definitely get full of cooked agave. I get some uh, citrus from it. Uh, some, you get the, the baked uh, baking spices from it as well from the cooked agave. It's got that sweetness, the kind of cinnamony sweetness to it, which is nice. And then I'm getting some uh, pepper. And hints of citrus. This is a really nice Blanco. Um, it's it's pretty aggressive though on the burn. So if you're not one that likes the burn in your tequila, um, this one might, might be off putting to you, but if you uh, don't mind the burn, because I think sometimes the burn really enhances the flavor profile. And in this case it does, but it's, it is a rock solid, very good tasting Blanco. I mean, if I was to go into a store and see this on the shelf versus Patron, and Don Julio or something like that, um, I would definitely go with the Siete Leguas over any of those. This is a, a rock solid, very good Blanco. I like it a lot. Because of the burn, I wouldn't say it's my favorite Blanco, but it is definitely a good one if you want to know what a good Blanco tastes like and you see it grab it this is not one that you need salt and lime for you can drink this sipping it straight or if you want to do shots you can do shots with it as well and it'll be a good experience for you so that's the Blanco well now that we see what the Blanco is all about let's take a look at the Reposado so this is the Reposado bottle now, uh, the ones you may see on the shelf, the 750 milliliters, it's just a bigger version of this, basically. But you'll see the label with the uh, with the horse on it and, it's, and the 7 for Siete Leguas. All right, so let's pop this puppy open. Again, this is a miniature bottle that I bought in Mexico on my last trip down there. And again, we're using a Jarrito, Jarrito nosing glass from Stazel. All right, let's take a look at this. So this is the repo. Now, according to the information I got, this is aged eight months in a uh, used whiskey barrel. And if you look, it's got very, very light color to it. Just very faint hint of, of yellow to it. And that's about it. So there's not a whole lot of color to it. But again, the viscosity on this one is, you know, the same as the Blanco. Get good, good legs on the glass, good, 
pearls on there. So it's got a good viscosity to it. But again, the color, there's like nothing. Barely, barely see a little yellow in it, if you can see it. All right, so let's see what we get on the taste. Very similar to the Blanco. A slight hint of oak on the taste. And a little hint of vanilla. Just a slight, slight hint of it. On the nose, it's, like I said, it's really close to the, the Blanco. Um... Do get a little hint of vanilla in the nose, which is nice, which you should get from aging in a barrel. And that's basically it. You get the really nice cooked agave flavor. You get a little citrus, peppery uh, nose to it. Slight, slight vanilla. And that's about it. I mean, it's so it's very close to the Blanco. Just a slight hint of vanilla and a slight hint of oakiness from it. On the flavor, again, the burn is a lot less aggressive in this, which is typical also with aging in wood, where the, the, the wooden barrel will soothe the burning on it somewhat. And it did, it mellowed it out on this, so it has uh, less burn. So if the Blanco and the burn of the Blanco um, concerns you, then this one might be a better choice for you. It has a very similar flavor profile to the Blanco without a lot of the aggressive burn that the Blanco has. And then you just get that slight, I'd call it a kiss, a vanilla and oakiness from it, but not a whole lot. I mean, it's barely noticeable, but it's there. But it's it's a good repo. It's not one of my favorite repos. Um, there's other repos that I would select over this if it was on the shelf against them. But um, if it was up against something like Patron and Don Julio um, type of stuff or any of the other stuff that's diffused, I would definitely... Uh, go with the Siete Leguas. It's it's not bad. It's it's good. So there you go. It's just got less burn than the Blanco. Very similar taste profile. Slight hint of vanilla. Slight hint of oak. But uh, a good a good reposado. So eight months in a barrel. That's it. Which isn't a whole lot. So let's take a look at the Añejo and see how that differs um, next. All right, so there you have it. That was the uh, Reposado. So now we're going to take a look at the Añejo and uh, check this one out. This one is aged for 24 months in a uh, used whiskey barrel. And that's what the Añejo looks like. So we'll see what this one has to offer compared to the Reposado which is only aged for eight months. Get this little bottle open. Again, this is a miniature bottle that I obtained in Mexico when I went to the tequila producing region in Guadalajara. Let's take a look at this baby. Let's see what we got. All right, so looking at it, oh, it's got a little more of the yellow hue to it um, than the Repo. It's actually notice, more noticeable in this, which is always good because you want to get that uh, caramel type of color from it, from the barrel. And then you can see from the side, we'll, we'll swirl it around a little bit and get it to open up a little more too. But it's got very nice legs on it. You can see the pearls everywhere. So it's got a nice viscosity to it. Let's see what's different on it on the smell. 
Mm, we get the cook, same cooked agave from the Blanco. Except this one's got a little bit of, um, with the vanilla, a little caramel on the nose. It it's, uh, has a little citrus mixed in there, too. Some, like, orange uh, orange blossom. Pepper. I'm getting pepper from it. Definitely vanilla. And caramel. Getting some caramel on the end of the on the end of the nose. Mmm. Smells good. It smells good. It smells like a very good an añejo. Really nice creamy and oily mouthfeel to it. Cooked agave on the front, which is always great to have on a good añejo. I'm getting vanilla towards the finish. And then when it finishes, a little bit of chocolate. A light hint of uh, oak. It's a little oakiness to it as well. The burn's pretty much subsided a lot. There's a little burn, but it's really not as aggressive as the Blanco. The Blanco's had a really aggressive burn to it. Mm. This Añejo is super nice. I like the Añejo a lot. I think of the three that I've tried, the Añejo is, is my favorite. I do like a good Blanco, but for me, the Blanco was just a little too aggressive on the burn. The peppery burn that it has. But this is... Um, this is a beautiful añejo, so I have to say that of the three, you know, the um, añejo is one that I would buy again. And I, if I was to walk into a store and see the añejo there with Patron, with uh, Don Julio añejo, or any of those other ones, um, I would definitely pick up the Siete Leguas. This is very good. A very good añejo. I give this one a high scores. If I was on Tequila Matchmaker, I'd probably rate this one at around a 90. So 88, 88 to 90. Very good. Get you some. Try it. Um, if you like the burn, the, the Blanco is right up your alley. It's perfect. If you want a very light-tasting Reposado with a little bit of the the burn but the burn being subsided a little bit from aging in the barrel the reposado is a good choice to look at but if you really want a rock solid añejo and um want to don't mind paying a you know decent price for it it's not bad at all i think if the añejo goes here for 50 something dollars i think um it's not bad like 55 dollars i think is what um i found it for it's a good price for a really good rock solid añejo. I would keep this one on my shelf. The other ones, not so much. Um, they're good. They're rock solid, but I have other uh, Blancos and other Reposados that I prefer over it. But if I had to choose between Patron, Don Julio, or any of the other stuff that's diffused, um, number one choice right here, Siete Leguas. That's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about Siete Leguas, please comment below. Let me know if you also you've tried it and you'd like to share what your feelings are on it. Uh, please post below. We'd love to see your comments. Don't forget to subscribe. We have some more reviews coming up as well as some other uh, vi informative videos with some other things in regards to tequila and mezcal. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you click the bell for the notifications so you're notified of any of the new uh, videos that are posted here. The most important thing to remember is life is too short to drink bad tequila. Salud. Mm. I really like this in Yeho. <laughs>